What's up, everybody? This is your boy, KJ Summy here, and here's Full Boy Washington. Full Boy, what's up? So, today we decided to do a podcast type video. Essentially, we're going to be talking about anything we have on our mind. So, we're going to talk about Star Wars content, then we're going to talk about views on the world, and then we're going to talk about movies we're looking forward to seeing for the rest of this year. So, I'm going to leave it over to Full Boy Washington. I want you to start off the conversation about Star Wars. All right, so about Star Wars. Star Wars, I kind of fell off at its edge because we got like, uh, Star Wars Hunter's doing good though, but we got um, Star Wars Visions, that was supposed to be like an animated, and that was an utterly failure. Like, I don't even know why they did that. The animation was all off. The fight scenes, half of the episodes was off. And I just to dig it though. So what do you think, KJ? So, to be honest, I still need to get caught up on my Star Wars shows. I've been so busy and as you all know, I graduated from Central Michigan University back in May and I've been busy looking for a job and all that good stuff. I recently started an internship, but I'm still looking for a full-time job. I'm just doing an internship until I can get a full-time job. But anyway, I think Star Wars has fallen off. Like, it's like they don't know what they want to do. I wish they would have made the Obi-Wan TV show into a movie. I still haven't watched it. If it was a movie, I would have watched it by now. But I know that it takes place in between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it does. And they digitally de-aged Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen so that they physically appeared the same as they did in the prequel trilogy. But they definitely should have made it into a movie. And apparently, as you're watching it, this is what I've heard from people anyway. You could tell that it was supposed to be a movie by the way it was executed. Obi-Wan, they could have portrayed him way better because like we could have learned so much about him. Not him like falling and being like real ill and stuff. We wants to know like his love story or whatever he came to become a Jedi. Like, what was he like before he um betrayed Anakin Skywalker or way before he um, got trained by um, Quan Jin. I was just wondering the same thing. Like, in the movies, they never explained if he had a love life. Yeah. It's like the only Jedi we know of who had a love life was Anakin. It was him and Padme. Like, they don't explore the love life of any other Jedi. But then again, it's a rule that Jedi aren't allowed to fall in love in the movies. Right. It's established in the TV shows too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what I liked about Solo. With Solo, we got to see Han's past and how he met Lando because the Millennium Falcon was originally Lando's. They established that in The Empire Strikes Back. Like, he even says that it was originally Lando's. But with Solo, I liked seeing it, even though Solo could have been executed better. But I also liked seeing how he and Chewbacca met. And then with Rogue One, that movie takes place after Revenge of the Sith and before A New Hope, just like Solo. But the main thing I liked about Rogue One was the hallway fight scene, to be honest, with Vader. Yeah, that was cool. But the anthology movies, they need more work, to be honest. Like, I like the way they're executed, mostly, but they just need more work, if you know what I'm saying. They need a lot more work. Because, <laughs> like, what they did to the Acolyte, which takes place 100 years before the Phantom Menace, that was mid. Because what I'm saying is, like, why would they bring Yoda to act like they only show the back of his head? That would make sense. Seriously? Yes. Oh, jeez. And then you go show Emperor Palpatine, Darth Plagueis, the wise for like five seconds. Like, how will we know who that is if you only show him like a little bit, five minutes? No, not five minutes, but five seconds. That is stupid. Seriously. So, I'll talk about Marvel. So, Marvel, they was doing mid too, though, like Star Wars was. But they went back up ever since they made that Deadpool versus Wolverine movie. And that was really good though. It was like the greatest Marvel movie um, this year. Because like last year and the last before, Marvel was utterly trash. Let's be real about it. Because without Wolverine and Deadpool coming out, Marvel would have been gone for it. Yeah, so Jamar's right. Deadpool and Wolverine was the only MCU movie that came out this year. So the next MCU movie we'll get is Captain America Brave New World. It comes out in February of 2025. And it will show Sam Wilson take up the role of Captain America. So I don't know about all of you, but I haven't watched any of the 
Disney Plus TV shows yet, just the movies. I heard She-Hulk Attorney at Law was awful. The CGI looked awful. I've seen clips of it. And they made the abomination especially into a joke. Like, I like the design better than the Incredible Hulk. I understand that his design in that show and in Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings is more comic book accurate, but he was a lot more terrifying than the Incredible Hulk. And then, with the Star Wars movies, we all know the sequel trilogy did really need to be made. They just wanted to do it for money and a follow up on the original trilogy because chronologically the prequel trilogy comes before the original trilogy, which is why it's called the prequel trilogy. Darth Vader is my favorite Star Wars character, but when it comes to Marvel, Joe Mar is right, Deadpool and Wolverine definitely saved Marvel because after phase three, Marvel has been struggling to find its balance. Like with phase four, for example, Black Widow was all right. Yeah. I wish they would have made it an origin movie because they waited until after she was killed off in Endgame to make a movie about her. So it takes place after Captain America's Civil War and before Avengers Infinity War, which was okay, but I just wish they would have made it an origin movie. But the two best Phase 4 movies for me were Spider-Man No Way Home and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I have a video on it. It was one of my very first videos. I ranked the Phase 4 movies from worst to best. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. All right, so these are the movies and the TV shows I'm gonna say that's trash. Um, y'all can text in the comment if y'all agree, disagree. It's y'all opinion. But like I said, I don't like She-Hawk. She-Hawk is utterly trash and messing up. Like literally, they made her compare like a weakling though. And the, and the um, design of her, it looked fake a little bit to be honest with you. Like when I was watching it, it didn't look nothing like the Hawk. And Eternals, Eternals like storyline, it just all over the place. Like we don't know who bad or good they switch up. Like they all over the place, and I'm like, if they gonna make a part two, they just go fuck it up even more. I'm like, no. Nah. Absolutely, Eternals was awful. That should have been a TV show. And like Jomar said, it was all over the place. It was hard to keep up with what was going on. Eternals is the only movie from phases one through four of the MCU I don't currently own. It was just awful. And I can see why a lot of stores didn't sell too many copies of it. We all know that they recasted Bruce Banner from Edward Norton to Mark Ruffalo. So until Captain America Civil War, Hulk was the only character from The Incredible Hulk that reappeared in the MCU. William Hurt reprised his role as General Ross in Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and in Black Widow. He appeared as the U.S. Secretary of State. Unfortunately, William Hurt passed away in March 2022. May he rest in peace. So because of that, Harrison Ford will be taking over as Ross for the rest of his MCU appearances, starting with Captain America Brave New World. And he's supposed to become Red Hulk in that movie, so we'll finally get Red Hulk in the MCU. It sucks we never got to see William Hurt as Red Hulk, but Harrison Ford even said he'll make sure to honor William Hurt and apparently he and William Hurt were good friends before he passed away. Tim Roth, he replaced his role as the Abomination in Shang-Chi and the She-Hulk, like I said. And Liv Tyler and Tim Blake Nelson, they'll be reprising their roles as Betty Ross and Samuel Stearns from The Incredible Hulk. Samuel Stearns, he's supposed to become the leader in the movie. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was my favorite Marvel movie that came out last year in 2023. And if you haven't seen it already, Check out my top three films of 2023 to see where I placed it at on that list. It's really good. You should take your tune and watch it. Most definitely. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, we're going to talk about crossovers that they should make movie-wise, no matter what genre. So, I'm going to say that they should make a Marvel movie with um, Daredevil, with Moon Knight, and Blade, and all the little dark horror um, Marvel characters that you can make inside a movie. Now that'd be good though. And bringing on Halloween though, that'd be fire. Absolutely. So, for those of you who've seen the Transformers movies, specifically Transformers Rise of the Beast, at the very end, spoilers, just saying, but at the end, Noah, he gets recruited to join G.I. Joe, and they've been trying to do a Transformers G.I. Joe crossover for a while. So let's see where they go at that, because they still haven't really started production on that. Right. So we could talk about the views about the world. So what I say about the world though, like the world is a lot of chaos and stuff like that, we know that. But 
everybody can just get along with each other and be in their own peaceful vibe. But you don't have to like hate on each other, just be yourself. That's all I gotta say right now. I most definitely agree with that, especially in this day and age. I will say that COVID definitely made things a lot worse. Like in 2020, for example, COVID defined that year and politics defined that year. We got to quit hating each other based on political views and all that. That's why I don't like to talk about politics because I never know who I can offend and I never know the amount of friendships I can lose and whatnot. But you got to stop being so political. Focus on what we all have in common rather than what we're different. And make sure you treat others the way you want to be treated. Don't discriminate on people based on race, sexual orientation, gender, nationality, the whole shebang. Like, we gotta quit hating on each other. Especially here in the US, we gotta recognize we're all Americans. But no matter where we're from, we're all human. Right, and you can't stop being people friends just because they pop to the views. It depends on the view. They go too dark with the views, that's different, I understand. But Absolutely. you can't like try to um, force, manipulate, control, or any type of means to um, make them do something that they don't want to do. Absolutely. But yeah, so we just gotta make sure we really stop and think because actions have consequences and one wrong move, it can determine what your life is gonna be like in the near future. Yeah. All right. Now, let's talk about movies that we're looking forward to seeing for the rest of 2024. Feel free to comment down with movies you're looking forward to seeing for the rest of this year. Okay, so I'm gonna go first. So, as you all probably saw, I reacted to the Transformers 1 trailer with Avery McCarrick Television. He's one of my college friends from Central. So, with Transformers 1, like I said, it's gonna focus on telling the origin of Optimus Prime and Megatron, how they started out as brothers in arms, and how they become arch enemies. And it's also gonna focus on the origin of the Transformers themselves. Chris Hemsworth is voicing Optimus, Brian Tyree Henry is voicing Megatron, and it makes sense since it's younger versions of them. With Chris Hemsworth in particular, I looked up he was chosen to voice a younger Optimus because of his deep voice. And it should make sense within the story as he leads the Autobots over a course of time. His voice will become Peter Cullen's voice. But either way, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I may or may not do a review on it. Just depends on my time because I'm pretty busy nowadays. And then I'm also looking forward to seeing Venom The Last Dance. It's supposed to be the last movie of Tom Hardy's Venom movies in the Sony Spider-Man universe. Or I should say the Spider-Man list universe since Spider-Man has yet to make an appearance in that universe. And I'm looking forward to seeing Joker 2. Let's see how Lady Gaga does as Harley Quinn. And then I'm also looking forward to seeing Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I recently watched the trailer. It looks epic. Shadow looks awesome. And he's definitely a true threat. And they're going to be teaming up with Dr. Robotnik. Let's see how that goes. What movies I'm looking for for this year is Craven the Manhunter. He's like Spider-Man like um, villain. And he's like on the animation cartoons. And I think like he's really good as a, a evil protagonist. And for the second movie I want to see is Sonic 3. And I feel like Sonic 3 is going to be real good because they bring a shadow in. But they could have added my man Silver. Where's Silver at? Like, oh, you can go add Shadow, but not Silver. I'm like, what's up with that? Like, at this point, <laughs> they might just bring the whole characters in the whole movie. Like, we tired of waiting. We want all of it. But the thing is, though, like, I'm ready for a Transformer movie, too, though. That's the third one. Because, like, I know it's animation, and not many people like animation. They like the real-life Transformers, which I understand. But give it a chance, though. You may never know. It might be different. And let's be real. They could have made a live action movie with just the Transformers, no humans, but it also would have cost them a lot of money, which is why it's an animated film instead. But I'm looking forward to seeing just the robots for once, like I said in my Transformers 1 reaction video. And it'll be nice to not focus on the humans because that's the thing about the live action movies. They spent more time on the humans than on the actual Transformers. Like, for example, in the Transformers generation one cartoon and in transformers animated for example there were human characters but they weren't the main focus they were just there to help the transformers and all that but i didn't even think of craven the hunter Man. i forgot that was coming out this year yeah. to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, like I'm looking forward to seeing another Spider-Man villain being brought on the big screen. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? I just want to say one last one. I want to see the Venom movie, like he said, Venom last man. I can't wait till that come out. But they better bring more like Spider-Man characters and Venom in there. Where's Spider-Man at? Don't leave Spider-Man out. Speaking of that, for those of you who have seen Madam Web, spoiler alert, but Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, obviously, he's born at the end of the movie. So that's why he hasn't been found in the Spider-Man universe yet because he hasn't even been born yet until Madam Web. Madam Web, by the way, it was just an okay movie. Nothing too special about it. But the Venom movies are by far my favorite films of the Spider-Man universe by Sony. Because I still haven't seen Morbius, but I was told that was awful. Morbius is good. Morbius is better than Medium Web. But so? right. also Medium Web is better than Eternals. I cannot stand Eternals. Yeah, Eternals, definitely. I could go far enough to say it was the worst Marvel movie I've seen. Mm -hmm. Like, they did Angelina Jolie dirty in that movie. Too. Yeah. And I said this in other videos, Angelina Jolie, she's one of my two celebrity crushes, along with Zoe Saldana, the actress that plays Gamora. But I was just disappointed that they did her dirty. And Icarus, too. Like, Icarus was revealed to be the main villain of the movie. See, Eternals was just all over the place. That's my point. But I haven't even rewatched it ever since I've seen it in theaters. Right. But, like, if y'all want to check out my channel, stay tuned. Flow Boy Washington. I do poetry, motivation, speaking. And that'd be all. I'm going to try to put it in the description down below. But yeah, check out his YouTube channel. He's very good at poetry and appreciate it. No problem. And you can look at him to give you some words of wisdom, especially when you're feeling down or just need a boost in your life. That said, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe for more content, and make sure you hit that bell for more updates. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out. And God bless y'all. Yes, sir.